Welcome to What's New with AWS. I'm Jeff Barr. As always, I love your feedback. I love the likes. I love the comments. So keep them coming. This week, I've got another story for you and then three great launches. So sometimes one character can make all the difference. Let's go back a little bit in history. I used to be in the shrink wrap software business. The way I looked at this, we'd spend a ton of time designing, coding, testing, and then finally shipping nothing more than a box of bits. We'd ship it, then it took a really long time for customers to find, buy, and then use that software. All these delays were intrinsic to the process, and it meant that getting feedback was really, really difficult. What I found out was that you were often well into the implementation of the next version of your software before you got any feedback whatsoever, and it was just simply too late to respond by changing your intentions. Really slow and really frustrating. Now, let me tell you a little bit about Jeff Bezos. Jeff's a really well-known person, and tons of our customers email him with their ideas, their observations, their complaints. And Jeff has this really cool process for making sure those are taken care of. He gets these emails, and he finds the right person on his executive team, and he forwards it. But before he does that, he has just one really important character, a question mark. This is a well-known part of his process. And what happens is that when you get an email from Jeff with a question mark, you know that your job, you don't get a chance to choose to accept it or not, your job, you need to take that email, figure out how to handle the customer's challenge, concern, question, suggestion, and then process it on a very, very timely basis and make sure Jeff knows that you've handled it. What I love about this is it sets the right tone for handling our customers right from the top, shows that all important customer obsession. So let me tell you my personal take on this. I really love to meet with customers. When I do it, I show up with just a couple things. I've got a nice blank pad of paper and I've got my trusty F701 pen right at my fingertips. I'm there to listen and to learn. And I actually love to start with that very, very same question mark. I want to get feedback from our customer and I want to get it directly to our service team. If I'm in a situation where I've got my laptop and I'm connected and it's convenient, right there, right while meeting with our customer, if they say, hey, it'd be awesome if this service did this or had this feature or got this interesting challenge, I'll do my best to understand it. I'll write it up. And right there, right in the meeting, I'll take a tiny time out. I'll email that feedback right to the appropriate service team. The, the teams love this immediacy. They'll respond right away and they'll say, ask them this, ask them this, learn, learn even more. They never say, well, who's this customer? Are they big? Are they important? Do they spend enough money? They don't care about that. They just care about the fact that here's a customer. They've got something that they need to share with us. Now, even more fun, after I do this, and, and I love to get to meet with customers again and again and again over the years, sometimes the second or third time I'll meet with a customer in the, the same building, the same meeting room, I'll get to be back and say, well, we were here six months or a year ago. You told me all these interesting things about how we can do better for you. And this is what we've done for you as a result. It, it's so awesome to be able to close that feedback loop make it clear that we're, we're listening and able to respond. So this is just one aspect of what we call customer obsession, our first and maybe most important leadership principle. And it's really important you know, that you know, this is a lot more than just a, a phrase. It is absolutely essential to our innovation process and it's just the way we work. Really important that you know that this is not a secret. I'm not spilling the beans on any insider stuff. I would challenge you to, to take what I share with you today, take it, Maybe use it as is, but even better, take it, innovate from that, and improve upon the process. And let me know how you actually do that. Now, the other side of this, and this is a, a job for, for you. I'm give, actually giving you a bit of homework here. I need you to actually talk back to us. And we cannot read your mind. We, we are in absolute desperate need of your feedback. I'm like, if I was a, a TV personality, I'd be begging you for your feedback at this point. Okay, I'll beg you. We desperately need your feedback. Just send it to us. Don't just sit there and, and hope that we're going to figure out, we're going to read your mind, we're going to hear from somebody else that, that what you need. Don't assume that we, we know what you want. Big or small, send us that feedback. You might need just a small update to an existing feature. Maybe you need a new feature entirely. 
Maybe you have an idea for a, a really cool new service. Or maybe you're a really big picture thinker and you say, well, I've got an idea for an entire market segment that maybe it makes sense for AWS to be a part of. Let me share with you just one example of that. Going back a, a couple of years, a bunch of our customers kind of understood how with AWS, we, we take something and try to figure out how to make it as simple and straightforward and easy to use as possible while making it really durable and scalable and powerful. And they said, well, our existing data warehouse doesn't quite have all of those attributes. We think Amazon could do a better job at that than the existing companies. And so people got in touch with us and they said, Amazon, you really should take a look at this data warehouse market segment and figure out if you've got something to contribute. Well, we took a look and said, hmm, we know what we could do there to do a whole lot better. We did. We launched Amazon Redshift. And as you can tell from if you've watched previous videos, we've, we've, Redshift has been an amazing success for us, solved a lot of great problems for our customers. We continue to innovate and add lots and lots of customer-driven features to, to Redshift. That's just one really simple example. Why do we need this feedback? Well, the model that we have is that we expect 90% of the roadmap for any service to come from you, from our customers. That last 10%, that should be kind of our own internal vision, our own internal innovation. But the 90% is, is what I'm asking you for. Now, there's a ton of ways that you can give us your feedback. Let me just go through these one by one for you. If you have a TAM, that's short for Technical Account Manager, assigned to your organization, you can meet with your TAM and hand them your wish list. They're going to take it and they're going to make sure that that gets directly to the, the service teams. If you get to meet any of us live at an AWS event, at a, a summit, or, um, or at reInvent, let's say, make sure you, you get whatever services you're using, thinking about using, find the members of the team, find the devs, find the product managers, maybe find the, the general manager or the VP, let them know who you are, get to know them a little bit, and get their contact information. Later, when you've got a, a need for an, a new feature, you got an idea, Drop them a quick email, let them know how you, you met, and say, hey, good to chat with you again, and here's what I'm looking for. 99.99% of the time, they're going to love to hear from you. And that last 0.01, let me know, and I'll, I'll fix them for you. You can also track, track any of us down on any of the popular social media sites. You can find us on LinkedIn. You can find us on Twitter. You can find us on Reddit. Another great way to find us and share some feedback. If you've got kind of a, an involved idea, you might want to write a, a, a blog post to kind of share where you're at and where you'd like us to go. You can enter your ideas into the public roadmap. I'll, I'll talk a bit more about that in, in just a second. And another thing you can do is you can always track down one of my email addresses and send it to me. I, I would really appreciate it. Just and my, in my, my inbox would thank you if you try, try all the other processes first. But if I do get your feedback, I'm more than happy to, to get it. Try those regular channels first. All right, so let's talk about this really cool idea of public roadmaps. We first did our first public roadmap in late 2018 for the AWS Container Services. Our hope was this, that this was going to help us to get closer to our customers and to be a bit more transparent with where we were, where we are, where we're going. There was a really awesome response to that first roadmap, and now several other teams also are doing the same thing. Elastic Beanstalk, CDK, AppMesh, CloudFormation, AppRunner, and Proton are just some of the public roadmaps I was able to find. Within the roadmap, you'll find a bunch of columns that summarize the status of all the different ideas that we're, that we're researching, working on, that we have previewing, and that we've shipped. Super easy for you to add to a roadmap. Take a look at it. Make sure we don't already have your request. If we don't have it, go ahead and add your request into there. If you find something that's substantially the same as what you're looking for, just hit the thumbs up reaction, to just add your reaction to the existing ones. This public roadmap model has worked really well for us. I expect other services will adapt it over time. And with that, I hope you enjoyed just a little bit of this look at how we do customer obsession, how we do with feedback. And next, let's take a look at some of our launches that were just a direct result of your feedback. All right, the first launch is IO2 Block Express Volumes. You probably know Amazon EBS, Elastic Block Store. It's been around since 2008. It gives you block storage volumes for your EC2 instances. There's currently six different volume types, or there were before today's announcement, that are a combination of HDD or SSD volumes of your choice. 
Um, earlier, actually last year, last year we launched the IO2 volumes and the IO2 volumes were a big step forward. You, get, you got 100 times higher durability and then 10 times the IOPS per gigabyte. The idea is that you get more storage options, you get more durability and higher performance. We launched that, but then we're like, well, we can actually do even better. So we're now extending IO2 with something awesome called Block Express. This is designed for your mission critical transaction processing workloads. Things like SAP HANA, Microsoft SQL Server, Oracle, and Apache Cassandra. This is the kind of really storage intensive stuff. The stuff that once upon a time you needed a, a really expensive, really complicated SAN, a storage area network. The raw specs on the IO2 Block Express are, are to me absolutely mind blowing. On the storage side, you can start with four gigabyte volumes, go all the way up to 64 terabytes in a single EBS volume. On the input outputs per second, the IOPS up to 256,000. Tons of throughput, up to 4,000 megabytes per second, all with under a millisecond of latency. Now, right now, you can use these with the R5B instances. Those instances are designed to work specifically with IO2 Block Express, and they're available in nine sizes. Gotta let you know, we're working to make sure that you can use IO2 Block Express really soon with all different types of EC2 instances. The Block Express also supports some really important existing EBS features, things like multi-attach and elastic volumes. These new IO2 Block Express volumes are available in six regions. They're built at the same rate as the IO2 volumes, and you can read Chani's blog post to learn a whole lot more. Next up, this one's a little bit simple, but really important. You can now have up to 2,000 CloudFormation stacks in each of your AWS accounts. The previous limit was just one-tenth that, or 200 stacks per account. We, we continue to work to make CloudFormation more and more powerful and to keep raising the limits. In recent history, we've raised a couple other limits, things like the max template size, the parameter count, and the stack set limit. My challenge to you, if you're not using CloudFormation and practicing infrastructure as code, then why not? This change, the, the 2,000 stacks per account, it applies to 23 CloudFormation regions as listed in the What's New. Finally, something really new and I think really, really cool, something called Amazon Health Lake. This lets you build a HIPAA eligible data lake designed specifically for health information. If, if you're in the, the, the health information business, you got a bunch of information stored in different silos and it's kind of all different shapes and sizes and no uniform access methods, this is gonna be a great service for you. Once you got the data inside, you can easily extract insights using analytics and machine learning. Like everything we do at AWS, we're really focused on ease of use. You create your data store, you add your data, and then you can run your own natural language queries. If you've got existing apps and you wanna kind of get this plugged into what you're already doing, there's a really clean, straightforward, but powerful REST API for doing queries. HealthLake supports both structured and non-structured text. This can be things like clinical notes, lab reports, insurance claims, all that kind of really important information. Now, internally, it stores data in what's called the, the FHIR format. I don't know a whole lot about this, but apparently it stands for Fast Healthcare Interoperability Resource. And we currently support 71 different FHIR resource types. In addition to that, we've got connectors for several other popular applications and other relevant data types. Because this is a HIPAA eligible service, it takes a lot of care with the data. So all data is encrypted both at rest and in transit. To learn a whole lot more about this, you can read the blog post. All right, so hope you enjoyed my story of customer obsession. Keep that feedback coming. Never hesitate to send it my way, our way. Find us, track us down, get it to us. That's what I've got for you this week. Keep those comments coming, read them all. Like, subscribe, and thanks so much for watching. We'll see you again soon.